Thank you very much, sir, for uh, what can only be described as uh, a magnificent uh, overlay of uh, the broad themes that we're going to address through the course of these two-day uh, workshop in terms of giving you a, a really good insight uh, into the various challenges uh, that a lot of them faced, uh, you know, within the government and outside uh, as they sought to amend the copyright regime and, and balance out all these competing interests these challenges, the lobbying at work, who finally prevailed, who didn't. Uh, I think that presentation really, really gives us some very keen insights uh, into this very dynamic process of lawmaking. Um, and you can also, so what we thought is uh, we're running a, a little short on time. Uh, so we'll open it up to a few questions now, uh, given that uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, good ideas in there. And I'm sure uh, that some of you would, would, would like to press him on some of the ideas and, and gain some clarity as well. But before that, uh, you know, I really uh, want to thank uh, Sumit Malik of uh, EBC again because we ran into a problem uh, in that uh, as with most of our lawmaking endeavors, uh, typically you get the law in compartments. Right? So when, when, when parliament amends and when the government amends, they'll give you just the amendments, but they won't, they won't stitch it back into the parent act. And that's always been a problem because you don't know which version then is the right version. Uh, and given that, uh, especially, and you saw that uh, uh, Professor Gopal Krishna had taken us through various provisions, uh, it might have been useful to have the start of his presentation, but we gave it to you right in the middle. So uh, does everyone have a copy of uh, this Bear Act, which is the latest Copyright Act with the latest amendments, uh, very kindly provided to us by Sumit of, uh, uh, and uh, e the Eastern Book Company? Right. We also put up a, an electronic version at some point. I think Pranesh Prakash from CIS had an electronic version uh, during, I think, up to date as of 2011. Then things changed since then. Uh, and I think Nikhil Krishnamurti, who was supposed to be one of our panelists, had a later version. And oh, I'll get that and put it up on the web as well. So we have an electronic version as well. Uh, and we're trying to convince Madhukar, um, uh, Madhukar of PRS, Parliamentary Research Services, uh, to try and make that their next endeavor, which is really to put up electronic versions of laws, but updated laws, right? Because you, I mean, the only electronic versions you have is you'll just get the amendments and you'll just get the parent act and then you have to stitch it together yourself, which is, which is a big pain. Uh, so we'll hopefully get that in some time. Uh, so right now, uh, can we please take a, a, a few questions for Professor Gopalakrishnan and then we'll break for uh, a tea and coffee. So if you could please introduce yourself, uh, you know, and pose a very directed question, um, and, and and then uh, hopefully get a, a good discussion going here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> I'm Rajendra Kumar from KNS Partners. I just have one question uh, on Section 18. Uh, Section 18 uh, today has a new proviso with regard to uh, future platforms of exploitation. So as and when there is an assignment, uh, uh, one cannot re really assign future platforms. Now, Section 30A uh, deals with licensing. Uh, it says um, uh, the provisions of Section 19 shall, with any necessary adaptations and modifications, apply in relation to a license under Section 30 as they apply in relation to assignment of copyright in a work. Now, when you read Section 19, uh, the proviso under Section 18 does not find any mention. Uh, does it mean that uh, when a work is licensed, uh, uh, one could envisage uh, assignment or, or licensing of future platforms? Uh, one could envisage as, uh, licensing of future platforms in the context of licensing? I hope I have uh, articulated my question. Uh, I, I think the amendment on 18.1, I'll just take it up. 18.1, uh, we have a, a provision which has been added by saying that. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, provided whether that so, uh, no such assignment shall be applied to any medium or mode of uh, uh, exploitation of the work which did not exist or was not in commercial use at the time when the assignment was made, unless the assignment specifically referred to such medium or mode of exploitation of that work. Well, my reading is that when you say Section 18, automatically everything in Section 18 will come. You cannot keep out some portion of Section 18 and apply some portion of uh, uh, you know, 18. So the licensing agreement will also need to address uh, 
uh, the mode of uh, assignment. Uh, the reason probably is if you look at the case law that came from Mumbai High Court as well as from Madras High Court with reference to application of old contracts to new context, particularly on video, uh, uh, video licensing. There was conflict of uh, reasoning. In the, even within the Bombay High Court itself, you could see the conflict. Some courts read the contract by saying that it's implied that even the future rights has been assigned, which seems to be too much. The other courts didn't understand, and they relied upon some other provisions to say that the future work has not been, particularly the Bassmiller case, the Madras High Court. What has been built in is by saying that if you can, if there is some, if you say all rights and all media is the language which you use, if there is some existing technology and areas, mobile ringtones is one, uh, you know, um, uh, areas which one can look at it. Because you can't envisage in 60s when uh, Pashmat has been assigned, oh, who can think about internet, internet transmission? And if you argue by saying that the rights on internet has been assigned on 60s, it's foolish in terms of it. So the court went into the literal meaning of the word and then interpreted without understanding where the new rights will go when the new rights has been created. This proviso is something which has been built according to me, uh, makes it very clear that if you know the future technology coming in, put the technology very specifically in the contract, if it is not in commercial use. If a technology is already in commercial use, well, it can get implied upon that. It also gives an impression that uh, the possibility of the owner of copyright licensing or assigning different modes to different set of people is also a commercial practice that is going on. So whether it is assignment or licensing, I believe it applies to, uh, tech to future technologies as long as technology is identifiable and specific. This is Rajesh from Simka South Indian Music Companies Association. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, ambiguity with regards to royalty sharing of the authors and composers and the um, label owners. Uh, could you shed some light and uh, elaborate on what kind of uh, royalty sharing is envisaged in the amendments and is uh, if, if already there is a contract which has been signed which, which assigns the sound recording to a label and the music and literary works to a label then is the label liable to pay f uh, royalties on, uh, on a periodic basis? Uh. Uh, I keep my fingers crossed on this uh, uh, because this proviso is a compromise between the different lobbying groups. That's why I said I look forward for a uh, you know, harmonious coexistence of industry and the creators. The best solution is finding out, uh, uh, sitting across the table and settling your own uh, a disputes on the old contracts and the new contracts which they want to enter into. Uh, as an academic, I believe if there is an amendment, that amendment applies to existing work as well as future work. That's as an academic, my view. Uh, it becomes meaningless if you say that if the rights is not applicable to existing, existing works. We have seen it in 1992, nobody questioned when 1992 amendments expanded the right to storage on electronic medium. The amendment we have given to uh, communication to public in the 1992 amendment, nobody argued by saying that these rights will be applicable only to uh, future works and not to the existing works. So whenever there is an expansion of right, that expansion of rights applies to existing as well as new rights that comes into. So I have no uh, uh, second thoughts on it. Otherwise, the meaning of the law will become uh, uh, no, uh, and no use. But then who will enjoy it is a question. Whether the rights will go back to the creator and then the creator gets the freedom to reassign it or whether the old contracts will govern even the new rights. That's precisely the question which the court addressed in amending section 18.1, which talks about unforeseen new rights coming in. 
conceptually and theoretically the rights must go to the creator because section 7 makes it very clear that the author is the first owner since the author is the first owner the right must flow back to the author when a new right has been created the contractual terms can create problems probably the provisos are trying to address that critical issue because if you ask the question what is the reason for these new provisos to come in is it because there is an imbalanced contractual relationship that existed the intention of the legislature is to correct that imbalance but then well the wordings can create problems that's why i said you can litigate the anomalies go to your life or you can find good contractual relationship i concluded by saying that i look forward for good contractual relationship thank you and on that note uh, i think we'll we we'll just break for because our time is really short uh, you have him completely for the coffee break so we'll since we're running short on time uh, let's break I'm very here all the day so i'm going to interview <laughs> so you can read all the questions and i can come back you during the break is it yes problem <laughs> absolutely and i'm here for two days so i'm a co sponsor i cannot run away <laughs> so okay so may i welcome you to please have a quick uh, tea and coffee we'll assemble back here in about uh, not more than 10 minutes yeah just a quick 5 10 minutes and we'll come back inside the first session